New here on the night team, years of allegations of abuse and neglected wildlife in need in southern Indiana, all pointing to one man and his exotic animals. Our focus team took those allegations to the USDA, and this week the feds ordered Tim Stark to cease and desist. Tonight, Shay McAllister continues her investigation with a trip to Charlestown, Indiana to meet with Stark. In a profanity-riddled interview, he blames everyone else. Two tall iron gates greet you at the edge of Tim Stark's facility. Posters warn intruders to keep their distance. Tim Stark knew we were coming, and he invited us in. Am I perfect? Hell no, I'm not. Don't claim to be, don't want to be. But I stand my ground that my animals are taken care of. I do not abuse animals. I do not neglect animals. We talked to seven whistleblowers with serious accusations, describing moldy food, lack of water, dirty cages, and ailments that don't receive vet care. Stark says the explanation is simple. They didn't do their job. Then they want to point the finger at me because they're worthless pieces of and they didn't do their job. They would come to me and an animal's already pretty much sitting laying there on his deathbed. And I'm like, what the hell? Why wasn't this reported to me two or three days ago? Well, we didn't look at it, we didn't see it. Because, so in other words, you didn't do your damn job. He points the finger at his staff, but USDA inspection reports support their claims. Are the inspection reports wrong? Most of them, yes. More specifically, he blames bad inspection reports on one specific inspector. I couldn't understand half the shit that come out of his mouth. The one thing I did understand was, oh, this out of compliance, that out of compliance, oh, you did, you know, and I'm standing there like, what the fuck are you talking about? How do you go from perfect record to all of a sudden like an 18 page write up? Stark says it was difficult to get clarification from the government agency. He didn't always know what needed to be fixed. You want me to abide by regulations or laws? Then give me those regulations and laws and shut the f up. If you think something's out of compliance, show it to me and I'll fix it immediately. But I will not tolerate somebody coming here and just telling me, oh, this is wrong or that's wrong. You got to fix this. You got to fix that because I said so. We asked Stark about certain incidents like the January 2016 fire that killed at least 40 animals. That's the beginning of my PETA war. You think PETA started the fire? Damn right I do. And we've got proof that PETA started fires all over the country. Do you have any proof that they started the fire here? No. Nope. But I, I don't have a problem accusing them of it. He also blames PETA for an incident with tiger cubs. According to USDA paperwork, the facility's vet declawed the cubs at wildlife in need. Their paws became infected. Stark says then the vet was out of the country. The cubs ultimately died. You know, the accusations that they made about the tiger cubs that were injured and ended up dead. Well, guess what? Damn, I had a undercover spy here on my property. Wonder why and how all that happened then. So are you saying that he was the reason those cubs died? You goddamn right he was. What did he do? Don't know. If we knew that, it'd all be done and over with. We reached out to PETA about the accusations. They sent us a statement citing a federal judge ruling where Stark's vet admits to declawing the tiger cubs. The statement goes on to say, his claims about PETA are quite obviously false. Tim Stark calls most of the accusations against him hearsay. He says there's no evidence to back them up. Would you say all of your animals live in a safe habitat? Yeah, because they don't get hurt in their habitat. Well, evidently it's safe. Is it appropriate for each of the animal types? Yes. And would you be willing to show us that? No. Why not? Because you reporters suck. I guess that's the simplest way to put that. He also refused to show us proof that he rehabilitates and releases animals, like his website claims. How many animals have you rehabilitated and released? Over all the years? Oh, hell, thousands and thousands. And do you have any written proof, documents, videos yeah. of that? Yeah. Is it easy to see? Do you share it with people? No. Ain't nobody's business. He wouldn't show us proof of how many animals he saved. He also wouldn't elaborate on how he kills. We asked after reading a USDA inspection report detailing a discussion with Stark. Stark admitting to inspectors he, quote, euthanized a snow leopard by beating it with a baseball bat multiple times. He told us his more recent euthanizations 
have been birds. And I know when a bird's brought in, pretty much at that point, whether or not it's salvageable or not. You know, I don't need nobody else telling me that. And how do you euthanize these birds? Usually it's just a humane euthanasia. It's done quick, it's done simple, and it's over with. Can you tell us what that is? No, it's nobody's business how I do things. Nobody's business. I do exactly what I'm required to do. What is humane about euthanasia? The final result is death. Death is what the whistleblowers fear most. Unexplained, unnecessary, animal death. I have to hope that someone will say, let's do right by these animals. Let's find them homes. Let's give them proper care. I hope someone will take pity on them. So what happens next? Where do the animals go? There's only one agency that can answer those questions. That's the USDA. And we have called, we've sent emails, we've left voicemails, we have shared your concerns, and they have not provided answers. What we can tell you is Tim Stark has 35 days to appeal the decision, and he told us he plans to do just that. For Focus, I'm Shay McAllister.